tutorial is brought to you by PostBargain.com. 3D props at bargain prices. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a way of blocking out a rough design for your 3D model in a non-linear and unique way using a childish blobby mesh as your base. The process can be quite fun and because you're not using a continuous mesh, you will find that you'll have more creative freedom. We start off in ZBrush, and as you can see, I've loaded up a funny blobby looking mesh that looks like a balloon animal. It's a very simple mesh I made in Lightwave and imported into ZBrush. But when you play with a model using this technique, you get this result. As you can see, this technique won't give you fine details for your model. It's mainly to help you block in a good solid form while not restricting yourself to a single mesh. Anyway, while I would not be showing you a step-by-step -step guide on how it was done, I will however give you the underlining process. But before you import your blobby OBJ mesh into ZBrush, it needs a little preparation. In fact, it is one of the key factors in this technique. Each part of the mesh needs to be separated by polygroups in order for you to get the control you want in this process. Here is the mesh with polyframes turned on and the material set to a basic white material. The different colors of the mesh show you the different polygroupings set to this object. These polygroupings will be used to make selections of our individual mesh parts. Just to give you a clearer idea of the separate parts, here is a shaded overview. You may notice that I have grouped the left and right limb spheres together. This is so that when I sculpt the mesh in ZBrush, changes will be symmetrical. Oh, and I should let you know that the model was created along the Z-axis so that the limbs can get that symmetry. I know that ZBrush allows you to work on any axis, but I find that the X-axis is the most comforting. Once you have the polygroupings you want, import the object into ZBrush. Now. Pay close attention to these next few steps, as they are crucial to the whole process. Firstly, hold down the control and shift keys, then click on the body sphere shape. Notice how everything else becomes hidden? When you hold down control and shift keys while clicking on your mesh, it allows you to show the polygrouping that you set up in the other 3D program while hiding the rest of the mesh. We need to mask the body sphere, so hold down the control key and click anywhere on the empty canvas. The body sphere should now become darker, which means that it is masked. By holding control and clicking on empty canvas, you actually inverted the mask. So, because the body sphere was unmasked, things were reversed so it became masked. You need the mesh to be visible again, so hold down the control and shift keys and click anywhere on an empty part of your canvas. Your mesh should now reappear. We need to invert the mask, so hold down the control key and click anywhere on the empty canvas. The body sphere is now ready to be worked on. Using the move tool with a large brush size, you can now shape the body how you want. You can also use the other brushes and the smooth tool to give you a nicer form. However, I usually find that the move tool is enough because it allows me to mold the shape I want easily. If you use the smooth tool, remember to set it at a low strength or your mesh will seriously shrink. Once you have the shape you want, hold down the control key and click and drag a small square somewhere on the empty canvas to clear your mask. Now, all you have to do is repeat the process of hiding, masking and shaping the other spheres until you get a nice mesh shaped into something you like. And here's the finished mesh. While it's not very detailed, it's enough to give you a solid form that's not restricted to one mesh. The background is a bit dark, so here's the mesh again before and after. Here is the blobby sphere mesh which I turned into a unified skin. As you can see, a lot of detail has gone, so unless you consider yourself a good sculptor, you might want to consider retopologizing the mesh instead so that you can have more control over the details of your object. This is a rough blobby head shape that I made in Lightwave just to test this technique out on something different. While it was difficult to get the eyes and lips to look halfway decent, I managed to end up with this result. And here's a unified version of the head mesh. 
Because there were a lot of sharp details, I had to set the mesh resolution really high when creating the unified mesh to get the edges more defined. However, even then I still lost a lot of detail. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found a new way of blocking out your model. But don't be restricted to just characters or animals. You can also use this technique to create landscapes. If you wanted to create a quick concept design scene, you will find that this technique is a useful one. Also, you don't have to use spheres. You can use any shapes you want. Use primitives or just custom shapes. As long as the resolution is high enough, there shouldn't be a problem. Finally, if you don't want to use polygroups to separate your individual meshes, you can import each mesh sphere as a subtool. This will save you from the masking and hiding technique that I've covered in this tutorial, but you would still have to spend time importing all the separate meshes as subtools, then merging them together as one subtool later. However, you should pick whichever way you feel most comfortable with. If you would like to try out the blob meshes for the animal shape and head, you can find them on the Poser Bargains website in the free section. I'd also love to see what you wonderful people can do with these meshes, so please feel free to post up some links to the results of your work using the comments section. Or, feel free to post up a time lapse or turntable video on YouTube to show the results of your work. And don't feel like you should restrict yourself to making dog shapes and human heads with the meshes provided. For example, here's the same blobby animal mesh which I made into some sort of rough four-legged fantasy animal. And after a little subdividing and rough sculpting, I can get a nice solid animal form which I can use for the basis of a concept design. So, just be creative and surprise me. Let your imagination go wild. Anyway, you can look forward to many more quality tutorials in the future. Oh, and don't forget to visit poserbargains.com for some cheap 3D prop objects that are guaranteed to enhance your 3D artworks. Mm -hmm.